Man, I just saw it on some people, and the the individuality that it expressed was so beautiful to me. It's almost kind of a filter, you know, if you don't like my dreadlocks, you probably won't like me. dreadlocks really start? That's an interesting question. I'm thinking that I started seeing dreadlocks in the late 70s, the 80s. I was aware of dreads as a feature of Rastafarian style earlier than that. You didn't see dreadlocks when the first wave of natural hair came out, which was the late 60s and into the 70s when you had the huge afros. I'm remembering Yannick Noah, who was the tennis player, and I'm remembering him as an early 80s kind of person and how attractive he looked and, you know, sort of thinking, mm, wow, that's kind of a cool hairstyle. Making assumptions based on someone's appearance is, is, it's frustrating for me, but I don't know that you can get away from it. I think all cultures throughout all of history almost have always done that. It's just being who you are, just being, kind of going back to the way things used to be um, before hair grease and perms and hot combs and all the stuff that goes with black hair and just um, letting things go, letting things be. Wonder what my own hair would be like. Freedom is when I go everywhere, like if I come, you have a job, you wanna give me the job, sometimes you say, hey, go do this one, cut your hair, it happened to me before. But like I said, now it's my freedom because no rule. I can have it if I want to, I can cut it if I want to, that's my own decision. Well, I grew up in East Texas um, in a little town called Liberty City. Um, don't even have a post office or a police station. Um, there's just a small school there. So it was about as rural and backwoods as you can be. It was a very traditional way of life there. Um, uh, my home was not much that way though. I suppose I had a traditional home, but my parents never really stifled um, creativity in me and my brother and sister. Having something like this back home, when I do go back home, because I'm older and more confident in myself and who I am, it doesn't affect me as much. But growing up um, in high school, I began to grow out my hair. Um, and generally, not just a generational thing, not just the older people, but even the younger generation, it's, kind of, it's looked down upon, I guess you would say. They just say, oh, you hippie boy. I'm just a very natural person. I used to be almost 200 pounds. I've, and simply by switching to a natural way of life and just caring about myself, you know, I lost so much weight, I wasn't trying. All I was doing was just living a more natural life. Before I started Jetlax, I had perm. Before that, I had a jerry curl. You can burn your scalp. You know, if you pay someone to do it, it's probably like 40, 50 bucks. And you have to have it done every, you know, three weeks or something like that. So. You know, I got, I got kind of tired of it and I just wondered what my own hair would be like. I just cut it off one day and just, and my hair was, I had been growing my perm out so I had, you know, a good bit of natural hair under there and uh, I never felt more beautiful.
thinking about it, I know that a lot of my decision to do this is a bit of rebellion against what is seen as the status quo back home. individuality and defining yourself is, is important to me and to be able to relate to other people. All of me, why not take all of me? The importance of this as a statement of I am going to be me in some way. I do not have to subscribe to your definition of how I should look, how I should be, how I should identify myself. I decided to get in the army in 1984 because they don't have too much job in my country. In the uh, Togo army is like a dictatorial, like uh, you don't have a uh, your choice to decide whatever you want to say. You just listen to the boss and whatever they say, that's you going to do. I'm somebody, I like to tell the truth and uh, whatever is right for me, I don't have a question about it. That's I'm going to say and whatever I can say. Behind you, I can say that in front of you. In Army, many people look me like, oh, he's the one in front, he's the one talking about democracy, or he's the one talking to the, the civilian democratic about what's going on in the army. Uh, they try to kill me. But by God, I have my life saved. Now, I have a freedom. I can do whatever I want to do. I can say whatever I want to say. And uh, you know what? Before you walk in and you are fair, you, you can do whatever you want to do too much, you know? But now, I'm telling you, I do whatever I want to do. I think whatever I want to take. I have a peace of mind. It's very hard to somebody to tell me now, cut your hair. That's a one of uh, the part of freedom I'm talking about. I can cut if I want to, but before you can you can have it. Soon you have your hair grown up a little bit. You need to put it a little bit down because you are in the army. I'm not going to go look for somebody job to and tell me no. You look this way. I can hire you because it happened before. It's not going to happen again. Guys like Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler, who and and Bob Marley in the in the reggae movement, who kind of led this rebellion in Jamaica against um, the oppression that they were experiencing there. With the hair, they were making statements of, "I am not less than of a man. I am I am not a slave. I am I am I'm free, and I have individuality." And so I see, even though the context for me is much different than it was for them, I see it mu in much the same in much the same way. We take in uh, like a uh, experience from uh, Bob Marley. He is the star of promote the dreadlocks. He's the one promote the dreadlocks. That's why, and the way he's like a prophet, and the way. He put his word, the way he's talking about what's going on, he's getting it through the music, you know? And everybody listen to his music, who is the message he's giving. As I understand, Rastas, marijuana is also an important part of the religion in the same way that peyote is an important part of the religious expression of some Native American groups. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's an entirely unreasonable assumption to see somebody who is presenting with serious dreadlocks and not make the assumption that they might also be involved in some kind of marijuana use as well, because for those of us whose knowledge of Rastas is limited, that is it's understood to be another part of the set of cultural meanings of what it, it means to be a Rasta. I'm automa- it's automatically assumed that I smoke reefer all the time and I'm not responsible and I couldn't hold down a job and so many other things. And, and it's really, it is frustrating. I've had people definitely ask if I smoke and do you want to smoke and yeah, that, that does happen. I think it's along with that Rastafarian kind of image that people have in their head that Rastafarians in Jamaica smoking a bunch of weed, which is probably, you know, somewhat accurate. And you know, uh, they're somewhat accurate about me and my consumption of it, but, you know. Many people, they're not going to have a trust on my answer. I never see marijuana with my eyes and I never smell it. I don't smoke weed. Especially in the Christian community, um, and since I'm a Christian, it's ridiculous how judgmental so much of the church is about this type of thing. And I imagine that in a lot of ways I am setting myself up to continually have to struggle against that. I use um, all the books in the Bible as my, um, as what I see as the truth. And you'd be hard pressed to find um, anything in the Bible that says, with dreadlocks you cannot get into heaven. Samson, you know, even biblical images of um, a man with long hair and the power of long hair, um, you could kind of imagine that being included in, the, um, in a presentation that would include dreadlocks. I don't know why... I don't know why the business world or the professional world as a whole generally rejects this. I have no idea why. I, it's hard for me to, I try to put myself in a lot of people's shoes thinking about this stuff, but with that, with that situation, it's really hard because I don't understand it. It's just a strong misunderstanding. Um, and it, it frustrates me because they don't even want to spend the time to get to know me and who I really am and what I really feel about situ. Um, things and and how much of a work a good worker I would be they would rather just uh, say oh he has locks he's got dirty hair he's not gonna be a good worker he's not gonna be this he's not gonna be this and he is gonna be this 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 and this you know I but I don't, man, I don't know it's hard to understand <laughs>